Hi, this is Pastor Mary Cuffton. So glad you're tuning in. This is a leadership class, and we want to do these monthly. I've uh, been a bit remiss on this, but we've done one already. But we want to do it on a regular basis so that you can feed your leadership skills and grow in leadership because leadership is something that has to be acquired and learned and developed. And the level of our leadership affects our impact of, resp- of influence. The greater leader we become, the greater influence we can have for the kingdom. So we should all aspire to be greater leaders in whatever we're called to do. But I want to talk today about the four essential qualities of an effective leader. Four effective qualities or or essential qualities of a leader. And I want want to begin with one, uh, character. Character, without doubt, is the foundation of good leadership. You know, when Moses took the Ten Commandments from God and brought them down to uh, the people of Israel. Actually, God, I believe, spoke him out. And then he went up there to get them given to him by God. The first set, he came down. Remember that he broke. They had to go up and get a second set of Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments is the foundation of all moral law. And so he gave it to the people of Israel because he understood that character is based on the foundation of morality. You've got to be a person of a code of ethics, a code of morals, and they have to be strong in you, and you have to, do, have to lean upon them. Because when you're a person of your word, when you're a person that admits mistakes, uh, the Bible says um, don't bear false witness. Another word of that is don't lie. That's one of the Ten Commandments. And you can lie to yourself. You can give yourself a ten when you're really a two. You can say you're great when you're maybe not so great in an area. And, you, and, and when you don't admit faults to your people on your team, all of a sudden there's a lack of trust. In fact, you develop distrust. So the foundation is character. And uh, a character is, is one of the characteristics of, of character is that when you know someone is of good character, you can trust them. They'll be consistent. They're not uh, inconsistent in their actions. And you learn how to... Um, your consistency develops your strength. Yeah, like you, like you're moving forward, gaining and growing in your character. Because we have to develop that character, which is another thing I want to talk about. You have to develop character. Well, how do I develop character? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't just happen. You have to grow it. You've got to understand. You've got to do things that you don't necessarily want to do. That's a great way to develop discipline in your life. Is do things you don't like to do, or do things that stretch you. I was talking to my staff this week that in order to keep uh, growing, you've got to do a reset on your life wherever you are because what happens, we tend to, over the time span, we tend to dip in our, sometimes our effectiveness. We've got to do a reset. Then we need to stretch ourselves to learn new skills, to develop in our uh, leadership and in our, our responsibility, taking greater responsibility, whatever it takes you to a level of stretching, that's what God wants. And uh, I'm telling you, you can take a ministry upon your life and say, okay, I want to lead in this area. And it can be a step of faith and a stretch for you. We've had people take over Safe House, for instance, and next thing you know, they're needing leaders to teach. And so they'll pull on people to teach it's okay to talk about being a teacher, and all of a sudden you have to be a teacher in front of 125 homeless people. That's a different stretch. But it's good to do that because it puts us in a place of growth in our character, and we need that. And another part of uh, character is that we have to uh, be accountable to other people, uh, whether it's your wife, your husband, or other people on you know, in your life that you can say, listen, I'm going to hold myself accountable to you. That's a stretch. And then another thing about about being a good character is take responsibility. You know, one of the biggest things is own what you do. Uh, if, and if you've done it wrong, own it. Don't blame people. Say, you know what, I did it. It's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. you got to own it in order to have good character. So we're all developing character, but character is the foundation of a being effective leader. Number two, leaders must have perspective. Mean that as a leader, you've got to know where you're going. Another way of saying that is that you've got to have vision. Uh, in Isaiah 25, 
Isaiah 24 is talking about the doom and gloom that's coming in Israel, but 25 was a picture of what Israel was going to accomplish and how they're going to take out their enemies and how God was going to elevate them and protect them. And you've got to have a vision. You've got to have a, something that's going to be good, uh, that's going to have to uh, happen to you. And, and a vision is going to touch you, and you've got to relay it to other people. It's got to touch them. So if you get excited about the vision, and by the way, if your vision doesn't excite you, get a new vision. You've got to have, have something that, that's going to stretch you and invite enthusiasm because it's, a, it's, a, it's, the, it's the ultimate goal of where we're going. And we say, by the grace of God, we've got the potential to get there. But leaders are driven by vision of where you're headed. When my wife and I started this church, we had a vision of raising a people to touch nations of the world. That was our driving vision. And it took a while to develop that kind of leadership. But now we have a, a, a large cadre of leaders that have been through Bible school, healing school, uh, forever free. Uh, they've been through the encounter. And they learn how to be stretching. We have the 12. We do everything in our power to help stretch people, give them assignments and jobs that will cause them to rise up. But it has to focus on where we're headed. So my heart is that the vision of this house be put in every life of every believer that comes here. And the Lord had me write out the vision. The, the vision is to train and inspire a loving family of believers to effectively share their faith with non-believers in creative and compassionate ways and to raise up leaders to carry the message of the local church to the world. That's the vision. And the vision has, has different aspects to it, but that's always driven my wife and I. We have never left, lo lost sight of it. It's about you catching the fire of God and the message of God to carry it to the hurting people of the world. That is the vision of this house. And thank God it's coming to pass. But, but we have to, vision keeps you on track. Vision is what kept the patriarchs of old on track. Uh, God spoke to Abraham that he would have a land. You know, Abraham never actually owned the land. It took a vision of God to show him this. One day you'll have this land. But really it wasn't until uh, Jacob went to Egypt 400 years later, uh, Joseph initially provided for them. 400 years later, they were delivered by Moses. And then Joshua took them into that land. Years later, better part of, you know, 450, uh, knocking on 500 years from the time that Jacob left, from the whole cycle came about, where finally, uh, from the time that Abraham was given the vision to the time it actually came to pass. Some things take time. But nevertheless, he kept his, his vision that he was part of a, of a beginning of a nation whose seed would bless the nations of the world. And then also he had a vision of a child. That took 25 years. And he was 100 and, and his wife was 90. So we see that God loves vision because it's what keeps you going. It's something out there in the future. And we've got to always have vision. No matter where you are in ministry, always give out the vision. Why are you doing this? And it should be a compelling thing that helps people to keep going. If I say vision, vision. Number three is courage. Courage is important because it enables leaders to initiate and take a risk to go to a goal. And it takes courage. You know, there's the talkers and there's the doers. Uh, you get around in a room and there's a, and there's a time to plan. But sometimes people, that's all I like to do is plan. Talk and talk and talk. More graphs, more pictures. More plans. Talk and talk and talk. You know, I don't mind talking. I don't mind planning. But there's a time to pull the trigger. There's a time to act upon it. There's a time to get to getting. you got to get out of the conference room and put the thing to work. And uh, really, the only measure of what you believe, of, of the only measure of what you believe is what you do. Doing is the measure of what you believe. And so we have to be people of action. And... Uh, in Jeremiah 15, 50 to 21, he talks about we got the courage to do what's right, even against uh, odds. The odds are against you. You got to speak what's right and do what's right, no matter what the world may say. You cannot capitulate to the world. We're not fitting into the culture. The culture's world has got to fit into the kingdom. Too many people, they just are like a chocolate eclair. They bend to whatever pressure is put upon them. That's not the way God designed us. You're supposed to have the backbone of a, of a, of a, of a crowbar. You're not bending for nothing. Let the world bend. You're not going to bend because you stand with God. God's not changing. Don't you change. It takes courage to be a, a leader in these last days, to stand for what is right, stand for what is true. 
because God's word is true and God's word always works. And so we've got to understand that we've got to get this courage in us. He said, be strong of a good courage, he told Joshua. Joshua, get, some, get your chutzpah up because I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to help you. We've got to understand when you've got the mind of God for the vision of God and you're developing the character of God in you, then when he tells you what to do, then you've got to have the courage to enact it. You know, a lot of times, and it takes a risk. We did a, a big thing out here in July, uh, putting on a July 4th big extravaganza, inviting the whole public, passing out flyers, and COVID is everywhere. Every, everyone's shut down, wearing masks and goggles and shields and living in their homes and whatever else it takes to be safe so they don't die. Well, you take a big uh, a risk to say, no, we're going we're gonna to do... We're going to do fireworks. No one else is doing fireworks in Roswell. We're going to do fireworks. And I had to get permission from the city to get it. And finally, the city said, okay, we'll let you do the fireworks. And uh, you need extra police. And there's a lot of unknown, a lot of risk, and a lot of people saying, well, I don't know if it's going to work. But we did it anyway. And it was a huge success. People showed up by the thousands to watch the fireworks. And fireworks was even better than what the Roswell City Hall put, put, puts on. And Zach Rowland jumped out there, did a great job with the team. And we have our own ATF license, so we got to do it at a fraction of the price. And we got to blow up the sky for Jesus, and it took a risk to do that. And we got to preach Jesus. We got to fly in a man out of New York, and he'd fly back Ricky Del Rio. Great success, but it takes a risk to do it. But uh, it takes courage to do things in these days. You got to do it against all odds. You got to do it against public opinion. You got to do it against what half the people around you say. I don't know about that, Pastor. I don't know about that. Well, you do it anyway because you feel good about it. You feel you get a yes in God. So you just blow the trumpet and march forward and yell, Charge! Hallelujah. That's my job is yell, Charge. And you're going to do the same thing in your own ministry. Whatever ministry job you have, it takes courage to step out to do something new, do something you've never done before. Remember Tracy... Uh, Shimaleki said, I want to do a, a Children Without Beds program. I see all these children out there in Street Reach, especially downtown. They don't have beds. They sleep on the floor with cockroaches. So number one, I'm going to invite the exterminators. We're going to kill every cockroach in sight. Number two, we're going to clean out the cockroaches. Number three, we're going to buy everybody a bed in the house. And I'm going to trust God to supply the need. Now, he's, now she's provided hundreds of beds all over Atlanta. And it's an ongoing ministry. I can see it going full time. But it takes courage to step out. It takes courage to speak at, uh, at, at an event where you've never spoken before, to lead a street reach where you've never led it before. It takes courage. But the people of God don't sit and talk in the conference room till Jesus comes. They get out and do it. And I tell you what, it, don't just talk about it, do it. It takes guts, but God will give you the courage. And uh, it, takes to, it takes commitment when you have to be uh, taking on ministry. And that takes courage. Say, I commit to do this for a year. That takes courage. And, um, but you'll do it anyway. But I believe the more you step out, your courage will grow because you have success under your belt and you have a, a legacy under your belt. Say, well, when you step out, most times it's successful. And so you, you'll develop a legacy behind you. But um, you got to give it all, though. you got to say, God, I'm going for it. If I die in the process, I die, but I'm going for it. you got to have that kind of heart. Not necessarily, necessarily die, but you're willing to lay it all down there. You know what I'm saying? Die to if it doesn't work out, to your reputation, to what people think about you. It takes a risk, but you got to have courage. Everybody say courage. It takes courage. So it takes character. It takes vision or perspective. It takes courage. Let me tell you what else it takes to be an effective leader. It takes favor. Favor. And uh, favor is the ability to attract other people and empower them to join together for a cause, for a vision. They're, they're going to pull it off in Jesus' name. So one of the things a leader must have is good people skills. You've got to relate to people well. You've got to be relational. You say, well, I'm not that relational. Well, develop it. Stretch yourself. Because it takes really the favor of God. Because without favor on your life, that favor's got to be passed on to the people. And the people need to have favor. Because the goal will never be achieved without favor. You need to have favor. And uh, there are some key things to help favor come on in your life. Number one is communication. Uh, you got to develop 
listening skills, listen to people, and listen to what they have to say. And then you got to have motivation. you got to have help people motivate people. And you got to be able to mobilize them to say, listen, this is going to be for your good. You're developing yourself. And plus, you're going to see people blessed and touched and come to Christ. It's a motivation. And then you got to be a, a, a good delegator. If you don't delegate, you'll stagnate. So you got to delegate. The delegator, they got to give someone else responsibility and authority. Say, this is yours. And let them have it. And let them do it. And then you got to be able to be, uh, uh, if you want to have operating faith, you got to be a, con- a, a confronter. Uh, you got to be able to confront, uh, you got to have a backbone. If there are relational differences, if there are things going a little skew, you got to confront it. You got to own your own part, but then you got to confront with people that have their weaknesses so and help them to own their part. But, it, but a weak leader is a non confrontational leader. A strong leader confronts people. When things are going awry, you got to confront yourself and confront other people. So you get things straightened out, and everybody's got to be on the same page, going down the road at the same direction. You got to confront people, got to get a backbone. Not a wishbone, a backbone. And then you also need to uh, uh, be able to reproduce yourself. It means you've got to take a leader make a leader out of them. You've got to make whatever you're good at, help them catch it so they develop it. This is huge. Don't hog all the information for yourself and sit in it like a hen on a bunch of eggs. No one else can do it. Listen, you've got to understand that you are developing yourself to help other people develop the skills in their own life. It's called reproduction. And uh, so we got to learn people skills, develop people skills. You know, learn to love people. you got to be other people minded to do that. Learn to meet people where they are and see their needs and get behind their eyeballs and say, what do they see? Get behind their feelings. What are they feeling? And identify with them. And obviously, if they need to have a, their, their eyesight changed, you do it. But you do it through love. You do it through understanding. You do it through catching where they are living. And people appreciate that. People appreciate empathy. People, people appreciate when they go like, yeah, okay, you understand what I'm feeling? You, you, know, you see it from my perspective? Now I'm willing to listen to you. But if you're just one-way communication, you can't hear what they're saying, yeah, it's a kind of a turnoff. And they kind of tune you out. If you keep doing that, they don't only tune you out, they'll get off the wagon. You just lost a good leader. So you've got to learn these things to keep people on board. And we got to have a, um, uh, you got to be a good, uh, make deposits in people's lives. You know, be an encourager. I tell you, the biggest thing people need is encouragement. Uh, encouragement, someone said, is the oxygen to the soul. How true is that statement? But, you know, you look at your own life. If you're working hard or doing something, it's good to have someone encourage you. They say, yeah, good job. I mean, it always helps me if, if I do something for someone. They say, thank you, Pastor. It was great. Thank you so much. We want to be able to be going around encouraging people, lifting people up. People need encouragement. Be a dispenser of encouragement. Carry around an, a, a tank of oxygen with a mask and say, here, take a whiff of oxygen. Really, they're taking a whiff of encouragement. That's what you want to be. And um, also uh, identify the strengths of people, and help them develop it. You know, help the people to see their characteristics that are powerful and talents and skills and strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus. So let me say this. When you grow in maturity with the Lord and the things of God, you grow in your leadership ability, and what that will do is put your eyes on other people and helping them develop their own leadership skills. And... Their own influence, because leadership is influence. The more people line up with developing their character, developing their vision, developing their courage, and developing favor upon their life, and giving favor away. These are some key elements that will rise, that as they rise up in you, will make you a good leader. God's looking for good leaders. God needs good leaders. He needs you to be a good leader. And I believe God's going to touch you and grow you to be a mighty leader in the kingdom. And it's going to impact so many people. It's exciting serving God. It's exciting growing in God. And God wants you to grow in your leadership skills. So let me pray for you that you grow in these areas, that you don't stay stagnant, that you reach up and you stretch to go to the next level. Let's pray. Father, I pray for all those listening, that they grow in their leadership skills. They grow in their character. They grow in their vision. They grow in their courage. And they grow in their favor, the favor of God upon their life. 
Grow up the leaders, Lord, in this house. Let us become servant leaders in this place. Our mind on God and on helping others fulfill the call on their life. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. And let's keep developing our skills to be the leader God's called us to be. Amen.